This is a keyboard, very recognizable and very simple. Or is it? This is a controller, the difference seems quite obvious. The keys are split apart and strangely there's no... this. But what is this? What led to our keyboards having this? And does that make this not a keyboard? This is called an ortholinear keyboard, but compared to the keyboards we're used to, there is no this. But where did this even come from? Well, in order to answer that, let's take a trip through history. Let's turn back the clock. The year is 2020, and custom keyboards are exploding in popularity. However, out of nowhere, a new trend has appeared. Ergonomic keyboards. Now, ergonomic keyboards come in all shapes and sizes, from small compacts all the way to large desk filling layouts. However, one style seemed to rule above them all. Ortholinear keyboards. The first question you may be asking is, why? Why do these exist? Well, in order to answer that, we need to talk about the rise of staggered keyboards. Take a look at your keyboard. Assuming you're not using one I already mentioned, you will notice that each row is slightly staggered from one another. Why is this the case? Well, this is very similar to the QWERTY layout. Keyboards came from typewriters, the earliest of which were mechanical, as you see here. Now watch as I press down a key. That's right, it moves physical arm-like objects. These are called slugs. Now for each key to activate each slug, there has to be a separation between each key. Otherwise, of course, you wouldn't be able to press them down. So very simply, they staggered each key from one another. This design has carried over to this day, however, the reason for staggering is no longer valid. However, by the mid-1950s, electric typewriters had hit the market, and key jamming disappeared. In order to make the transition easier, most if not all the features were kept the same. This included, of course, key staggering. This is still true, even to this day. Alright, so we just discussed how staggered keyboards came to be, and why we don't need them anymore. So how did ortholinear happen? Most sources seem to point hands at Jack Humbert, designer and creator of the extremely popular OLKB Plank keyboard. However, the ortholinear layout itself, or matrix layout, can be dated back further, all the way to the type matrix ergonomic. I'll be honest, finding information about this keyboard and when it was actually first designed was quite difficult. But in a study conducted in 2003, it, as Stax30 Wiki states, supposedly coined the term ortholinear. This technically would mean type matrix predates the OLKB Plank keyboard and coining the term ortholinear, but it is up to your own interpretation. So I'm editing this video right now and I just found this amazing site by Sally covering the history of these ergonomic keyboards. Although he does not mention type matrix specifically, if we were to ignore all the split layouts, sorry ErgoFit, and use the original criteria, something like even the original Rhyme Middle ergonomic typewriter could be considered an early ortholinear keyboard. But one that definitely fits this criteria is the Plum keyboard in 2005. Since I could not confirm the invention date of the type matrix 2020, the Plum potentially may be the first ortholinear keyboard although the Plum did have a non-standard layout. But also again, the Time Matrix was founded all the way back in 1997. Now, whether you believe it was claimed by Jack or Time Matrix, the history of ortholinear comparatively to staggered is quite new. Now that we mentioned when, now, why? There are already quite a few studies in this, and I'll leave some of them in the description if you want to read them but Type Matrix themselves have also conducted one about their keyboard. However, for the sake of simplicity, I'll try and explain why these were seen as quote unquote superior. So this is a picture of the two layouts. On a standard stagger layout, the staggered is followed in a one half one fourth pattern. This means from the first to the second row, the stagger is one half, but from the second to the third, it is one fourth. What this basically means is that each row is shifted towards the right, going down by that much of a key length. Some of you may be asking why not just have it all in a similar stagger. Again, Death Story explains this, so you can read it for clarification. But back to typing, if we look at it from the right hand, let's say you wanted to type J, Y. We will measure each key length with unit, U, where each key is one U lengthwise. 
Thus, going back to our example, it would take us a horizontal movement of 1 plus 1 fourth u in order to reach our y key. Notice on our ortholinear keyboard, it is just a movement of 1 u. This is one part of the fundamental theory behind ortholinear. Another fundamental theory of ortholinear is that due to our fingers moving in a lateral, forward, and diagonal motion, the keys being in a grid-like style would match our finger movements better. You can see this pretty clearly on a number pad. The fingers like to move straight up and down matching the ortholinear idea. These are, at least from what I can tell, the most important theories behind ortholinear keyboards. However, the application of which, in real practice, can be somewhat subjective. As a very quick note, as I just mentioned, this part can be very subjective, and most of this is my opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. In addition, your personal experiences may vary from a variety of factors, the most obvious of which is simply anatomy. Along with the physical limitations, I have also typed on both, plus one other layout, column staggered. I'll talk about this later. I reached around probably 5-10% to lower to my column staggered layout's typing speed on ortholinear. See the review later. However, again, I personally use a column staggered ergonomic keyboard, so you can judge whether I'm biased based upon that. First, let's split these two layouts into three variants. Small, intended, and with modifications. I'll explain these as we go. First, small variants. This is the most common type of layout of each of these. This would be what I consider the 65 and below range. Very common, if not the most common. Staggered keyboards are just fine. The usual distance complaints. However, ortholinear is where stuff gets interesting. Take the Olo KB plank. This is a 40% keyboard. You will probably experience the common I, and this common, and many others are about to mention. I put a community post asking people about their experiences with ortholinear keyboards, and this comment described very similarly what I experienced with this style. The only issue I find with it is that typing on it makes my wrists have to angle too much, which can become uncomfortable after some time. Ortholinear keyboards were designed upon the theory of our fingers having a very orthodox, say, direction, moving straight up and down, side to side, and directly diagonal. A great example of this is, again, numpads. In theory, all you have to do is move your fingers up and down, and no weird diagonal shifts are needed. But because these keyboards are so small, we usually angle our hands inwards like an upside down V. This presents a big problem for ortholinear users. Either uncomfortably angle your wrists such that it is linear and cause probably more health issues, or just get used to the weird angle. Neither of these solutions are ideal. What the second option often leads to is when your fingers move down, it ends up in the middle of two keys, causing more mispresses. However, of course, this isn't only limited to ortholinear keyboards. Sagger keyboards, mainly the left side, also suffer from this issue. However, the right side seems to work fine. Maybe there's an idea behind this. Due to this, the benefits of ortholinear keyboards following finger movement, more naturally, wavers a little. The idea on paper is sound, but in practice can be difficult to implement. But of course, it's not impossible. Now, let's move on to intended sizes. This is where the theory for ortholinear keyboards holds up much better. Some examples like the XD75 or even the original Type Matrix are good examples. Ideally though, in my opinion, you would want to go even bigger. Due to the larger size, you don't nearly need to angle your wrists as much, thus allowing the theory of matching finger movements more effectively. Meanwhile, standard keyboards still suffer from the angle issue. In this scenario, my personal opinion does tend to agree with ortholinear systems. Finally, we have to talk about mods. A quick note, all of these mods cannot be physical modifications, meaning no keys can be physically moved by adding only shifting keys to existing keys, for example. Basically, what this means is no split keyboards. I'll talk about these in a second. If you've heard of Comac, you may also have heard about the angle mod. What this is, is a variance of typing so that your fingers can move in the most natural way possible, due to the inwards angle. This is a picture of the angle mod being applied to the ISO layout, where each key on the bottom row is shifted one towards the left. However, on A and S I layouts, most people tend to simply change to the most natural finger to type each key, such as index for C instead of shifting the keys one towards the left. In practice, this is essentially the same thing. It simply allows your left hand to enable some of that natural curve of your fingers. 
This of course is a bit farther than having just to move down, but when it comes to comparing this with small variants of ortholinear keyboards, this seems at the very least equal. Although the top row is not fixed, just try this on your own and you'll feel how much more natural it is. It essentially creates what ortholinear was meant to be on a small keyboard, natural movements. In fact, many of you now may just realize that you were doing this the whole time. Typing C with the index finger seems to be a really common one. And well, that's really sort of it. Ortholinear is not a design disaster. There's not really a major argument supporting for or really even against it. If I were to put my personal two cents on it, it's just everyone moved on. This case of design feels quite like keyboard layouts. Much like Dvorak, there may be more drawbacks than appears, but at the same time, there will always be those who will take it above and beyond. When it comes to competition, it's pretty obvious that one style has taken over. Split. Just reading through this quick overview by Kinesis, you can already see how Split addresses most if not all the complaints of an ortholinear keyboard. Of course, I know that technically, a lot of Split keyboards have that linear style, but the point still holds. I know this is kind of an anticlimactic ending. This video covered a lot about theory, and I want to put some of it along with, of course, the practicality to the test. There are a lot of things that simply looking and testing only for a couple days cannot reveal. So I went ahead and spent four weeks integrating it into my life. Everything from typing to workflows to even a little bit of travel. Stay tuned.